Hello, everyone, and welcome to the virtual college exploration for all Pennsylvania students. I would like to go over a few reminders before we get started today. Um, you have no access to the chat. Your cameras have been turned off, but you can ask questions using the Q&A feature. There are more sessions available, so please return to the PACAC.org slash virtual website to look up some additional sessions. And after this session, the recording will be available on the same site within about a week's time. And now I'll pass it on. Great. Thank you. Um, my name is Evan Beals. I'm one of the admissions counselors here at the University of New Hampshire. Um, I'm the admissions counselor that covers Pennsylvania. So anyone that is either with us tonight or watching the recording, please feel free and um, my contact information will be available um, throughout the presentation. Um, please feel free to reach out with anything you need. Um, with me this evening as well is Maya, one of our current students, but I'll let Maya introduce herself. Hi, I'm Maya. I'm a senior genetic student student here at UNH. Um, I'm graduating in May. Pretty crazy, but excited to be your screen. Great. Thanks, Maya. Um, so I'm going to share my screen. We're going to go through a couple of slides and um, we'll be speaking both from my perspective as a staff member and, and a former student. I graduated in 2014, um, but Maya is here with us to share her perspective as a student and give you a little insight um, as to kind of what it's like living on campus and, and that life as well. Um, so without further ado, I will share my screen here and we will kind of go through um, just a couple things. So I always like to start with talking about location. Um, we're located in a very quintessential New England college town, Durham, New Hampshire. Um, we are a public flagship university, so like a, a larger public institution you may know in your area, um, but we're located in the seacoast region of New England and in New Hampshire, about 10 minutes away from the ocean, about 45 minutes to an hour from the White Mountains of New Hampshire. So some really great access in and out of these areas for sure. Um, but then we also have great access to Boston, Massachusetts and Portland, Maine. And there's an Amtrak train service that connects both of these two cities with a stop right on campus uh, in Durham. So it opens up the larger cities for students who might not be looking for um, kind of some time in the outdoors. Um, the cities are, are there for you as well. But UNH is really well known for students who like being in the outdoors, hiking, skiing, snowboarding, all of those kinds of things as well. Um, Maya, do you have any maybe insights as to what you enjoy about where UNH is located or, or things like that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's located in a very awesome part of New Hampshire, I'll be honest. Like it's on the seacoast, like um, Evan said. Um, Portsmouth is like 15 minutes away. Hampton Beach is 15 minutes away. I've gone to Portsmouth multiple times um, while being here with my family and um, with friends. And we've taken the bus um, that way. So we hopped on the bus, it was about a 20 minute ride and we were right in um, Portsmouth downtown and it was just a good experience doing that. But also my roommate from last year, she had to go to the Boston Children's Hospital and she um, would take the train right down to Boston. It brought her right there. So that's pretty cool. And it's located in a perfect spot and my hometown's Western Mass or Granby Mass and um, it's only about two hours away. So that was a good choice for me. All right. Another important part, and this does go into discussing a little bit of location, but um, we're considered a medium-sized school. Um, we have about 13,000 undergraduate students. Um, we are on the medium size, but up here in the Northeast, 13,000 is seen as, as a pretty large institution. Um, for some of those bigger public schools that you're used to in the Pennsylvania area, um, you'll be like, oh, UNH is actually kind of small. Um, you're right in that sense. Um, but what I think really helps define this size and these numbers is just the understanding that we are a larger institution, but we have that small town New England college feel. Um, so you have 13,000 undergraduate students, 54% of our students are coming from out of state. So as Maya mentioned, she's from Massachusetts. I grew up in Maine and went to UNH as an out of state student. Um, and there's a good number of students coming from Pennsylvania. So you're definitely in good company coming from there. Um, but a lot of students from the East Coast and in the Northeast, 
but we also attract students from 48 out of the 50 states and international students come from over 70 different countries. So there's a lot of students from all over. A really great way to get to know people from different backgrounds and different experiences. Um, and I think that's important for both out of state students who come to UNH for a different experience. And it's also important for our students here in New Hampshire um, who are able to meet and experience different people from different places and backgrounds. Um, so you'll see that there's representation from a lot of different places, but I think what's important here is just recognizing that it is an undergraduate focused institution. So when we talk about things like research and other opportunities, these hands-on programs are available to you as a first or second year student. And it's not out of the norm for you to be asked by a faculty member to get engaged with their labs or their um, projects or research programs. Um, it's the norm here for undergraduate students to have these really great hands-on experiences. We have five college divisions. Maya mentioned that she's a genetics major. That's in the College of Life Science and Agriculture. Um, there's five college divisions and over 150 different majors and programs. And one thing that I wanna really be clear about is we don't ever wanna kind of force you into a cookie cutter type experience where you're one major and you have to stay in that one spot our students are really encouraged to spread their wings and really explore different majors and different programs, take classes from different areas on campus. These five college divisions, some of them are pretty self-explanatory as to what is um, within each one, um, but the College of Liberal Arts hosts programs like English, our fine arts programs, theater, dance, um, sociology. There's a lot of programs in our English history, um, and anthropology programs in the College of Liberal Arts, so some humanities-based areas as well. The College of Life Science and Agriculture, where Maya um, calls home, um, there's really great biological sciences and agricultural sciences there. Um, so you'll find programs like genetics, like Maya mentioned. UNH is one of the few schools um, on the East Coast that has a full undergraduate program in genetics as well. So fun fact, really great laboratory space that I'm sure Maya has gotten to kind of engage in as well. Um, but some really strong programs in biomedical sciences, medical laboratory science, a lot of pre-veterinary, pre-med programs are connected in that College of Life Science and Agriculture. But we're gonna encourage students, if you're interested in those areas, to actually explore a, a specific major. Um, at UNH, we don't have a pre-med major. Instead, we'll encourage you to take coursework um, in biology or biomedical sciences and then work with an advisor um, to then explore your pre-med track to your degree. Um, the College of Health and Human Services, nursing, occupational therapy, a lot of the kind of like hands-on helping type programs. Some of the allied health programs are in that health and human services area. The College of Engineering and Physical Sciences, pretty self-explanatory, really great engineering programs. Um, programs like mathematics, statistics, physics, chemistry, um, all of those physical sciences are in that College of Engineering and Physical Sciences. And then our Paul College of Business and Economics is home to our business administration program, um, one of the largest majors on campus. Um, we have two economics degrees, a, a Bachelor of Arts in Economics and a Bachelor of Science in Analytical Economics. And then our Hotel and Hospitality Management program is within the Paul College. But again, you can choose a major when you apply to UNH if you'd like, or you can come in undeclared within any of those five college divisions if you're still a little unsure. Um, so I think that's a really important part of your experience here is you don't have to know right away what you wanna do um, coming into school. Maya, is, is there anything that you'd like to touch upon within kind of your major or your program? Um, you really touched upon it that UNH was one of the few schools on the Eastern Coast to have genetics because when I was trying to find a school, I didn't know what, what I really wanted to do in my major and I applied as so many different majors to different schools, but when it came down to it, I really wanted genetics. So I chose here and I'm in Colsa and um, yeah, that's all I will say about it. But. Great. So <clears throat> when we talk kind of there's different ways when we talk about like a co-curricular experience and extracurricular experiences. Um, obviously, we want to find a good academic fit for you. And that's where those five college divisions and over 150 majors and, and all that academic piece comes in. 
But then what else is really important is thinking about what kind of co-curricular experiences, things that exist related to your major or your program, what types of experiences do you have access to at your fingertips as a student at these different institutions that is really going to assist you in finding a passion in that area or better understanding what happens outside of the classroom and after you get your degree. And at UNH that comes in play with research. And a lot of students, like I, I was an English major when I first started at UNH. And when I was sitting in your shoes and, and the admissions counselor mentioned research, all I could picture was white lab coats, looking through a microscope, doing like scientific based research, um, looking at cells and biology. That's all I could picture. Um, and so I, I couldn't really picture myself doing that. And then I started doing some digging and realizing that at UNH, every single major does some type of research within the research program. Um, there's humanities-based research that exists in the College of Liberal Arts with English majors. There's um, students in the communication department that are, are doing research and all of these different kind of generation of new knowledge type programs or big life questions and, and figuring different things out. So if you're interested in the sciences, it probably clicks for you as to like how this could play into your co-curricular experience. If you're interested in the humanities, I just ask you, trust me, that it really does exist here. And there are programs for first year and second year students to really get involved. Um, it all starts with what we call the land, sea, and space grant status. It's one of only 20 universities in the country that offers all three of these grant statuses, really conducting research, generating new knowledge, and, and researching problems and issues in these three different areas. We were founded as a, one of the original land grant institutions. Um, so really looking at sustainable practices, how do we um, educate our future farmers? Granted, this was back in 1866 when UNH was founded. Um, so it's been a while since then. And these programs have changed dramatically since UNH was founded. However, you can imagine right now, um, I know Pennsylvania is not next to the ocean, but you're close enough by. Um, that you can definitely understand that there are issues that are that we're facing um, that deal with the oceans, warming sea temperatures or rising acidity levels, um, increased flooding, all of these different um, kind of issues that are going on. A lot of the research is happening here at UNH. We're located near the ocean, so it's an important part of our identity. Um, and then everyone's pretty equidistant from space, um, but UNH is really well known for conducting research with NASA. Last year, over $180 million came in in a grant from NASA to work at the undergraduate level to build some satellite structures right here on campus. Um, so there's a lot going on that includes and encourages undergraduate students to get involved. Um, Maya, in your time, have you been able to kind of work with some faculty and get involved in those areas? Unfortunately, right now I have not. I am currently seeking it. Um, with coronavirus, it's a little difficult because some of the faculty are worried that uh, we can, they'll hire somebody new and then the next day we'll be like, pack everything up, we're all going home again. Um, but I am seeking out research right now, but one of my close friends here actually is working in the COVID lab. Um, so she's getting all the COVID tests and testing them. And she says it's just a neat experience to be doing that. Um, there's a lot of opportunities here. A bunch of my friends have been doing different things. I love it. I think that's really the the close connections is is understanding that these uh, these projects and programs are really at your fingertips. Um, and unfortunately, as Maya mentioned, there's a lot of programs that either kind of like pump the brakes a little bit so we can make sure that the continuity of the research is happening and and things like that. Um, but the important note is that over 2,000 of our students every year present their research at the Undergraduate Research Conference. There's over um, 2,000 students presenting, over 500 faculty mentors. So it's a really great way um, to get involved and, and understand kind of what you can do after you graduate um, with your degree. So a lot of close connections there. This I will probably let Maya take the cake with. Um, student life is always a really big part of, of what happens on a college campus. And this is where the understanding of extracurricular life comes in. What happens outside of the classroom, strictly for your enjoyment and, and engagement. So 
Um, these are just some quick bullet points, but Maya, do you wanna share just kind of some highlights of your time on campus and, and what you really enjoy about being a member of, of the UNH community? Yes, I would love to. This is where I get really passionate too, is because I actually joined so many different things. Um, so first off, I'm a tour guide. So it's a club on campus. Um, it was just something that I decided to do. And I remember coming to UNH and touring it and my tour guide was a big like, like deal breaker with where I went um, and she was just amazing. So I was like, I wanna do that for other students and hope to like get them here, which I hope I've done. <laughs> I haven't really, I haven't seen many people on campus, but um, cause I'm in my class, in my room most of the time, but um, it's just a good point for, for myself that I want to do. I'm also part of the genealogy club. I'm very um, into genetics and that whole thing. So I joined the genealogy club. On top of that, I did join fraternity and sorority life. So I'm in a sorority. Um, it's about 18% of campus. It's growing, but that you do not need to join a sorority to have a good time and to meet people on campus. Um, if you are not into that, you do not need to be into that, but it's just an option for students. And so far I've met some of my closest friends this way. Um, we had new, new girls come in and I found my best friend right off the bat. So that was really fun. Um, but also like going to the D1, um, sports so like football hockey basketball games like all of that it's just so much fun to go with some friends and hang out and watch the games and um the tickets are included in your tuition so you just go online and you pick out your ticket and you get right into the game and just get to have fun with everybody but there's so much to do um and if there's not a club for you you can always make a club for yourself um and then also a lot of students do intramural sports so intramural soccer football anything you can think of with intramurals, they do that. And it's just a group of friends that get together and play the sport that they like. And it's just for fun, but there's so much to do and so much to do like just around the community too. I've done a lot of community service. Um, so there's just a lot to do clearly. Yeah, I think what I really like about the student life is there's something for everyone. And Maya touched on so many parts of that. For some students, they're really wanting to come to a larger university for the Division I athletic programs. Other students want nothing to do with athletics and they'd rather um, go see movies or engage in the art museum and things like that. So um, as Maya mentioned, there's so many different facets of life here. Um, for a medium sized institution, I think there's so much that keeps everyone engaged. So um, I'm gonna talk quickly about the application process. Um, so UNH is an early action school, um, so we do not offer early decision. Um, and if you're wondering about the differences between early action and early decision, we'd really encourage a conversation with your school counselor and your family just to make sure that you understand um, the differences between early action and early decision. So being early action, um, there is, it is a non-binding admissions program where you can apply early, we'll read your application early, you get a decision typically by early January timeframe. Um, that deadline to apply is November 15th. Um, if you're not ready to apply by November 15th, it is totally fine. There's no competitive advantage to apply early or closer to February 1st or the regular decision deadline here at UNH. You have an equal chance of getting into the university. Um, the admission criteria is the same, whether you apply before November 15th or closer to that February 1st. The same goes for scholarships and all of our financial aid. Um, as long as you submit your application for admission by February 1st and your FAFSA form, the free application for federal student aid, as long as you submit that by March 1st, you have equal access to scholarships, both merit scholarships and need-based financial aid as well. Um, so those two deadlines are right there on the screen for you, um, but please feel free to reach out with any questions and please never feel any pressure from us at the University of New Hampshire um, based on applying early or, or closer to certain dates. Um, whenever you're ready to apply, we're happy to work with you. In terms of what makes up your application, um, we're on the common application or the coalition application. Two online application platforms um, should be pretty simple to apply. UNH does not ask for additional essays or supplemental questions. Um, we're gonna ask a couple just clarifying questions from you on this, the supplemental form for the University of New Hampshire. We're gonna ask what your first and second choice major is. Um, and we're gonna just ask a couple demographic questions. 
the most important part of your application will be your high school transcript. This is where we're gonna look to make sure that you have a solid B or a B plus average in your core academic classes um, and that you meet our minimum admission requirements. Um, pretty standard for a four year public institution, typically looking for four years of English, three years of math, three years of science, three years of social science, and two years of a world language or through level two of whichever language you choose to take. Um, there are additional requirements for science or math based programs. So the only thing is that we do ask that you check out our website under the apply now tab for first year students and check out what some of those additional requirements might be or simply just send Evan Beals an email um, and I'm happy to chat with you through the process. We do require one letter of recommendation from either a school counselor or a core academic teacher. Um, you're welcome to send us one or two letters. Um, most students will send us one or two and that works really well for our process. You'll see that test scores are not listed here. This process is not new for UNH. Um, so we've been test optional. Um, and so for us, really it's a matter of you deciding whether or not you believe your test scores are a good representation of your academic ability. Um, if you believe that those test scores, you got them back and you thought to yourself, oh, that seems about right. Or um, on the other end, if you got your test scores back, you're like, wow, I, am, I could have done way better than that. Um, it's totally up to you. There's no advantage to you sending in your test scores here at UNH, and there's no disadvantage to withholding them. Um, I think the process in which that we go through, we're more test blind than we are test optional, just meaning that test scores have never really been an important part of our process. Um, if you do have questions about that or want to talk about your individual situation, I'm always happy um, to have a conversation around that as well. And then this is where I'm going to just kind of wrap up my portion of the presentation and, and hopefully open it up to any questions that are here. Um, these numbers do speak for themselves and, and at UNH we're really proud that our students are happy and engaged um, and really feeling like they can make a difference here on campus. When we talk about a retention rate, those are, are the students who come to UNH for their first year and those who choose to return for their second. It's about 20 percentage points higher than the national average. And to us, that's, that's a happiness index on campus. Are we doing what it takes to keep our students on campus? Um, do our students feel like we're providing what they need to be successful? Um, when you look at the other pieces there, that's really about success, right? And we wanna make sure that we understand that success should be what you define it as as a student. Um, if you think as a person, you're successful if you have a really high paying job when you graduate, as long as you communicate that with our career and professional success office, then they can probably work with you in trying to find and check off those boxes and, and get to that point. Um, if you believe as a student that success looks like traveling around the world and teaching English in some of the developing countries, then you can work really closely with our National Fellowships Office um, and they can work with you on, on those programs that allow you to do that with something like a Fulbright scholarship. And that should be considered success as well. Um, so however you define success, it's our job to help you find that. It's our job to help you understand what that looks like for you. I think most importantly, as a student and as a graduate of UNH, what's, what really stands out to me is that our students tell us over and over again that they feel like they have the skills, the competency, um, the confidence, but mostly the humility to go out and really make a difference. Um, they can go out and make the difference that they want to make in the world, big or small. Um, they feel like they can really, they, to, to really put themselves out there and do that. Um, UNH and our community has really provided that for them. So um, I'm gonna wrap up there. I'll leave this up on the screen, Maya, if there's anything else that you'd like to add. I know the big senior spring is coming up for you. Um, so feel free if, if you do have anything to add, I'm, I'm happy to, to yeah, open it up for you. Yeah, I'll quickly add what I'm doing after UNH. Um, I finally decided I'm gonna take a year off and I'm gonna get a job in a lab or somewhere, anywhere I can get a job, which is pretty likely with genetics major. Um, and I'm just gonna work for a year, see what I like and what I don't like. And then um, I'm gonna hopefully go back to school, which I know might be a little bit difficult um, as my parents keep telling me, but I am, I'm gonna get a master's. I'm still so young, I'm just ready 
to take a little bit of a break, get a job, and then come back and see, see, what, see what else is there. Great. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Um, if anyone has any questions, I'm happy to um, answer those now. All right. Doesn't look like we have any questions. So again, please feel free um, if anyone does come up with anything or you need anything from me. Um, my contact information is easily found on our admissions website, um, admissions.unh.edu. Um, if you just search for Pennsylvania, you'll be able to find my contact information there pretty quickly. Um, I'm always happy to help. Um, and, and actually, we do have one question. And Maya, this is um, a is great connection uh, here. <laughs> so, no. do you allow dual enrollment high school students who are participating in college and high school to transfer their credits when they apply? So, I can answer this. I did dual enrollment for two years in high school. I got my associate's degree while in high school. So, yes, uh, they do, and almost all my credits transferred. It was a simple, um, I just sent in my transcripts before I came and sent and like got to see what um, came in and what didn't. But for the most part, everything did. I'm graduating in two years, so it ended up working perfectly. But yes, simple answer is yes. But I'm, I'm here. I'm, I'm living proof <laughs> of it. It's like it was meant to be. Um, yeah. So yeah, so as Maya mentioned, it's really as simple as submitting your um, official college transcript from wherever you earned those credits. Um, I'm actually the person in our office that reviews all of those credits for incoming first year students. Um, and so I would be the one actually going through awarding credit, letting you know exactly what will transfer and what major requirements and things like that will take place. Um, and if you wanted to go through that process prior to applying or even like in the application process, um, all we need to do is connect via email and I can take a look at a transcript or even just a list of courses um, and let you know how those things all came um, come together. So, so yeah, great question, Maya. I'm glad we were able to tag team that one and have you on, on with us today. Me too. All right. So. think we should be all set. Again, everyone, if you do have any questions, um, please feel free to reach out. I'm always happy to chat. Um, but thanks for coming and joining us tonight. Hopefully got some great information about the University of New Hampshire. So. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. Um, when you do log out of today's session, just letting you know that there will be a quick survey that we would like you to complete. Again, there's more sessions available and a recording of this session will be available within a week's time at pacag.org slash virtual. Thank you, everyone. Bye.